Good evening, everybody. When Jay Kumar asked me to uh, come uh, uh, and speak in this, uh, what do you call it, be a guest of honor or something like that, I, I was so curious with the subject that I readily agreed because I wanted to hear Chitra speak. And especially when he said it's about the contribution of Cholas to South India, then I, my eyes were, you know, this lit up. Because whenever one thinks of Cholas, and you know, we go to Tanjavur and look at that great Brihadeshwaraya temple. I was first of all stunned that why is this in this reddish color? Why is this looking so beautiful? And you know, it's not painted by these gaudy paint, and you can see it like the way, uh, you know, I think the, the original people envisaged it to be. So I was very curious. And then I saw the size of the temple, it took my breath away. I mean, it was the same kind of feeling that I got when I saw the pyramids. Gosh, it's, this is so big. It's so spectacular in its construction. So we obviously knew that the Cholas were great builders. But the thing that made me very curious was a song, and I was just sharing it with her, uh, was a song that uh, you hear, Karnavendamo, Karnavendamo, Isenai Karnavendamo, Irukkan Irukkumbode Vinnuyar Gopuram Karnavendamo. I mean, it seems simple on one level, but what it is actually telling you is your impending mortality and the decaying of your body vis-a-vis -vis the immortality of this gopuram which is jutting into the sky. And when you compare that with chit ambaram, the concept of the sky and the pyramid, I mean this soaring structure which goes into the sky, it sort of makes you understand why they built taller and grander structures going into the sky. And then creating this great pilgrim route so you wonder whether it was the notion of bhakti that drove architecture or was it the other big notion in the temple, the idea of the sky, the god, and what did you do with water? So every temple had a great temple tank. And I know from my work with my wife with uh, the restoration of a temple tank, how important rainwater harvesting was, as an idea was and Chitra has spoken immensely about the regeneration of the water table with these temple tanks. So water on one side and the temple, but how could these temples be built? So the great agricultural system and the agronomy around um, Tanjavur, the incredible uh, agricultural surplus that was required to fund and make people work and give them a source of employment and build over such a long period of time required such a lot of planning and uh, work. So it, it was awesome, you know. So you wonder whether it was agriculture which drove culture or culture which came out of agriculture. Because the entire agrarian economy created the surplus which could then build these great temples which then become the pilgrim route. Then you hear that to administer this entire thing, a whole social system was created. And then what happened? Did they project their resources? You know that there was this great naval expedition that they went out. And you know that great temples of Angkor Wat and uh, you know, all of them had a great reservoir, a building of temple. Again, controlling water and a temple becomes the lead motif of culture. And I used to always be fascinated when you take off from Madras and then you look at the landscape, you find this half crescent moon of water shining. And on the other side, you see the paddy fields. So the Pallavas unfortunately didn't have a temp, you know, a great river flowing through them, but they could harness every depression in the land by building a wall across, storing water on one side and having the wetlands on that side. So it's incredible that the Pallavas could build an entire capital without a major river flowing through them. Most capitals are based on river. So herein, you have an entire cultural you know, center being shifted from Madurai and Kanchipuram to Tanjavur, and that becoming the seat of Tamil culture with somebody conquering the river and creating a great agricultural system. So 
you kind of wonder how did they control this society and then you hear about the idan kai and valan kai castes and how the entire system of governance was there and i hear that today she's going to be speaking about elections and uh, you know things of that nature which are quite so forward that the cholas had so i am so curious about the cholas and i always wondered how they went from here all the way to the shri vijaya kingdoms apparently they went with boats without rudders and so how did they sail across the seas and how did they go and i was always curious by the fact that you know in kerala where we, i come from whenever there's a cattle shed and there is a a well you always find a tortoise in it because the tortoise keeps the water clean and it sort of and when you come to tamil nadu you find that tortoise coming into a so do you call a, a house is a bad omen and why is a tortoise a bad omen in tamil nadu and why is it considered something cleansing in a well in in that years later somebody told me that from the time of the cholas people actually sailed between december to february and they went away when they knew that there were ocean currents taking them to the far away lands and when the sea turtles came the men of the households went following them in their boats so sea turtles were considered as something which will destroy your household men will leave their wives and go away never to return <laughs> maybe marry those women in distant shores and remnants of those distant shores come about in our song some of the rag that we like so much kamboji from kamboj has it come so did our culture go that way did we bring something back from here and then you look at the other great product of the cholas the great builders that they were is the chola bronzes so i just asked chitra when i was coming in here how did they get the copper and the tin and zinc required whatever is required for making the bronze and she said it came from indonesia so you know they created art out of metals that didn't exist here created temples where granite didn't exist shipped it from far so they were one of the greatest builders of our time and who are the other great builders the moguls but did the moguls built an irrigation system which then could create an economy they built mausoleums for themselves and you know their follies with water fatehpur sikri couldn't be used because water could not be done and how did these guys measure the levels of water and move and create these canals and rice is a hugely difficult crop because water has to come in water has to go out in floods they have to be evacuated so the entire process of land survey and bringing in water i wonder how they did it because now when we go and try to work you always putting a tube and putting water and trying to catch a level how did they do it at that time i'm curious as you are so let's wait for the master to speak